In this video, I will cover the main results of the paper Field Centipede. The paper was written by Huerta and de Volige, and it was published in American Economic Review 2009. This is a diagram of how the centipede game works. The game starts with a white player. He has two choices, continue or stop. If he stops, he gets $4, and the black player gets $1. If he continues, now black player can choose continue or stop. If the black player decides to stop, he will get $8, and the white player will get $2. If the black player decides to continue, now the white player has a choice to continue or stop. Let's go to the last note of the game. The black player can continue or stop. If he stop, he'll get $128. But if he continue, he will get only $64. Therefore, it's irrational for the black player to continue. The white player knows this using backward induction. Therefore, from the perspective of the white player, it's irrational to expect to receive $256. The white player has no incentives to continue, because it's better to stop and you receive $64 than continue and you receive $32. The conventional economic theory assumes that the people are rational maximizers and they predict that nobody will play continue. But when behavioral economists run field experiments, they capture that the most part of the students continue the game. See that in the first note, only 7.5% of the students stopped. And in the second note, only 15% of the students stopped. And in the third note, 35% of the students stopped. Now, let's see how chess players play the St. Pete game. All grandmasters stopped in the first note. They are the economic agents described by the economic theory. International masters are press rational. Not all stopped in the first note. 76% of international masters stopped in the first note. Federation masters, they are similar to international masters. 73% of federal masters stopped in the first note. What we see here is that higher the rating, higher the probability of stopping the first note. The rating is a great predictor for who will win a match. The chess titles, Grand Masters, International Masters, Federation Masters, are functions of rating as well. Overall, these results are very, very interesting. Behavioral economics describes several situations where people deviate from rationality. And this includes people from MBA, from Harvard, MIT, Stanford, students of statistics, math, computer science. But this paper found a subpopulation of irrational people. Unfortunately, according with the International Chess Federation, we have only 1,721 grandmasters in a planet with almost 8 billion people. This paper also found that people place the St. Pete game differently according to the opponent. When students play against students, they almost never stopped in the first note. Only 4% of the students stopped in the first section of the experiment, and only 2% of the students stopped in the second section of the experiment. And when students play against chess players, they become smarter. 28-32% to of the students stopped in the first note. And when chess players play against the students, they take easy with students. Only 37-38% of chess players stopped in the first note. But when chess players play against other chess players, this rate increased dramatically to 69% to 76%. This paper is great because they don't use any sophisticated statistical technique, but they provide great insights about the human behavior. No wonder it was published in American Economic Review, the most prestigious journal in economics.